what's new on your table right now? Well, I've got this row of 12 oscillators. So it's one whole side of a tocante. <laughs> The Tocante line of musical instruments is about and touching the materials of electronics. Each touchpad represents a pitch according to industry preferred numbers chosen by old wartime engineers for non-musical purposes. Here they form a unique and haunting musical scale, not unlike that of a gamelan are the neutral intervals of Persian music. Beyond these bass pitches, three golden sand roads flank each touchpad. Touching these androgynous nodes yields intermodulation, pitch and timbre shifts, and emergent chaotic masses. I'm on the inside of it, and well, I'm going to take these capacitors out, but I guess I should play. I have a scale here. Yeah. I'm going to solder it in. How did you pick? It's kind of actually, I thought it was going to be more wacky, but it came out to be like a really drone, like a complicated symphonic drone. How did you pick it? Um, well, I have this bowl of random capacitors here. Oh, that's a cool thing. Yeah, that's on the, it's that's on, I put it under the, yeah, I put it under the uh, micro, digital microscope here. And I have a, I've been picking from it with the tweezers. And you're just doing the like full on chaos random mode. Well, yeah, it's a square wave machine. So the square wave, each oscillator has two capacitors. So if you do it in random mode, they're all going to be rectangular because there's just always random capacitors. So there's always, always a, these, these different, different timbres. But, but what, what I, I do in the end is, is I'm going to go, go back in, in and I kind of have to make sure that there's a higher proportion of square waves than would randomly be there because you have to give like these Easter eggs. Square waves are like the strong, sweet, perfect fruits that you gotta put back into it. So I'm leaving some of the tones that I don't like. I already took two tones out that just sounded really weird. And eventually in the end, I'll go back and put a square wave, definitely some kind of like really mellow square wave in there. You'll go back and put a mellow square wave in. Yeah. yeah. But you're only dealing with square wave timbres, right? Like that's the other thing is that you've only got square timbres. So no, on this one, right? This one is the the uh, by step, but they're rectangular too because you're putting right. when you put capacitors in, they're rectangular. You'll do different rectangles. And yeah, I, that's that's the key to this one breaking like to the other Tocante arbitrary dimension is that there's different timbres in the same instrument too. Which is that's resistive important. controlled, right? Huh? That's resistive controlled, right? No, it's because there's two capacitors for each oscillator. Oh yeah, so because it's an A stable oscillator, you got two sides. Yeah. So the two, two capacitors. Two capacitors. Yeah, like if there's a smaller capacitor, that means there's going to be a pulse, a yeah. tiny pulse there. Makes sense. A big fat capacitor takes priority frequency wise. Like if there's a big capacitor, it's going to become a really low tone. Right. But it might be a pulse tone that's really low. And then, yeah, if you have two capacitors of the same size, then you'll get back to a square wave. So and the goal actually is to make random choices, but to try to make not too many choices that are like a big one and a really tiny one, because then you're just going to get yeah. another yeah. farty sound. You kind of have to balance them and like use a little bit of chaos magic to yeah, yeah that makes get sense. them involved with each other better. So, also. 
Letzte Woche. Ja. Der Wochenende der Gott war. Letzte Woche. Ich, ich ja. dachte mich, dass die Synthesizers sind von der Teufel. Immer? Sind, ich, ich, ja. Du glaubst, dass ähm, ein Tonmacher, ein Synthesizer, die, es kommt aus der Holle? Teufel. Um, uh, der Teufel. Was für ein Teufel? Ein Erdteufel oder ein Teufel von die Holle? Ein Den Erdgeist? Weißt du, was ich meine? Ein Erdgeist? Erdgeist. Ja. Well, denn der Oscillator ist ein Masser. Messer. Ein Messer. Ein Messer des, uh, der Zeit. Ein Was Messer meinst? der Zeit. Messer? Was ist ein Messer? Measure. Ein, ein Lineal, a ruler. Ein Lineal. A Messer ist a knife. Ein Messer ist ein... Aber ja. du messst... Ein knife. Ein Messer. Du machst. Ein Messer. Der Zeit und Massung der Zeit ist eine Handlung der Teufel. Eine Handlung der Teufel. Okay, so you're saying to mess with time is a sign of the devil. To measure. To measure time. time. But that, yeah. you see... I think I don't agree with that because on the okay the, back to uh, English. Well, well, wir könnten mehr auf Deutsch sagen. Okay. Ooh. Wir, später. Ja, später und jetzt. Ich kann sagen, dass die Sonne ist ein Lineal aus der Zeit. Die Sonne. Yeah. Um, you know, die Sonne. It's because uh, then the the Welt is drehen. Spinning. The felt late. The world spins, and so we must not. The late is the sine wave oscillator. Oh. Aber. Zega. Zega Zal oscillator? Sawtooth? Zega Zan. That's oscillator. Cool. We need to find the names of the is oscillators. Is nicht ein Welt. Ist nicht die Welt, der Welt. Der Welt ist natürlich, aber die Säge, Säge ist Kunst. Künstlich. Kannst du wirklich sagen, dass unterschiedliche Tone sind etwas mehr als ein... Äh, physical phenomenon -ish. What I mean is like, aren't other geometric, the geometric oscillators, saw, square, triangle, sine, they're just like, they earth, they're just like earth, wind, water, and fire. I mean, they're just different elements. Sega Schneider der Welt. Sega Schneider der Welt. Die Sega Schneider die Zeit, der Denzeit. Well, no. you're right to talk about the sawtooth wave. Zeit is feminine. But, you know, that's interesting. You know, there's not going to be... Um, um, or should we go back to... Um, we could go back to English or back to German. But I do want to say that the saw well, isn't found in nature, right? Like, we think we find certain things in natural natural elements but do we find the saw do we find gears es von der teufel <lacht> am wochenende der gott ich dachte dass die säge ist von teufel
can you tell me what you what chaos magic is? Well, I put six random capacitors into this Tocante. Uh huh. And this whole side is pretty chaotic, actually. I would say. Yep. Is very high. Some of these are very high frequency. Yeah, I can hear that. Oh, you can hear that. Yeah. No, it sounds... I think I'm gonna keep it really crazy. Cause I've got Have headphones. One the the reason I couldn't hear it yesterday was the feedback loop of the noise cancellation. Oh, okay. So now I can hear everything that we couldn't hear before. I can hear the chaos. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm putting a huge capacitor in my sixth to last oh it's very low why why so low oh man i don't know should i have a capacitor that's like i mean i'll try bending it with others yeah but peter you haven't answered my question just well i'm working on it with this in an instrumental answer that's cool. Now that I can no longer hear. It just sounded like a daxophone. It sounded like... It's totally silent. It's totally silent. Yeah, bring it further away. Let's see if that, that's part of the problem. I think I have to sing to it. <laughs> yeah, now I can hear it. Yeah, I think it's this really high one in here. That's good. Well, I was just trying to accept the chaotic values. Except the chaotic values here. of chaos magic. Yeah, so yeah, that's that's one interpretation. The strict interpretation is just like just yeah. do random yeah. things. That's the strict meaning and of chaos magic. And that helps in fishing too. That helps in fishing too. Like when you really like mm -hmm. you accept mm -hmm. failure like completely. Like what our mentor Ron Quivila yes would always say is just really. You know, being in a master's program, don't be scared of failure. failing. Just keep on, like, go, you're supposed to go out on the edge as far as you can. Right. <laughs> well, is that what chaos magic is?
I got the camera, I had the camera of me putting the components in and I was yeah, just doing the normal like fiddling you do when you're doing with the components. And I, I was having a good time. I thought that matched the piece. I thought that felt really good with the piece. Yeah, I found but, the same, that's exactly the same behavior I did was stuffing the components in the board and listening. But yeah, it's a great piece. I thought a lot of, you know, my touchstone is 2001 Ligeti, you know, <laughs> and I thought that would be great on that. This is the, well, the monolith, what is the monolith? The monolith is, you know, we know what the monolith is. It's the monolithic voltage regulator. No, it's the op amp. Well, yeah, no, that's, that does have a lot of, I'll take that. Yeah. Yeah, because if you have a yep. if you have a strong voltage, 
that you could power a bunch of these little beasties. Little monkeys. Not just one oscillator. So well, the monolith is not, like, the solar yeah. panel is like the monolith that's fallen from being a god, and now it's just a, like, a, the solar panel is like a, like an animal. The like solar actually, panel, yeah, the solar panel has yeah. no celestial qualities, because it's yeah. running all over the place. It's but, very terrestrial. But I, you know, I was thinking more about, like, when you said the monolith, you think about the square, the black square, the black box, how yeah. we make these incredible shapes that are just, you know, as a, here's, here's like a USB drive, and it's, it's curved to be slightly yeah. less than square. And it's like, yeah. but yeah. that's already a kind a of, battery too. right, yeah, but, and those subtle curves are a testament to our ability to shape things with our hands, right? Yeah. Um, and, you oh, know, the same goes with the daxophone. <laughs> the daxophone is a thin wooden strip played with a bow, which was created by Hans Reschel in 1987. Hans Reschel is a German font designer and instrument inventor. The instrument's sound, somewhere between a cello and a badger, ranges from furtive gurgles and delicate whistles to wild screams. The daxophone is literally only wood, no strings or air columns. Every change you make to the wood in shape, thickness, orientation, surface, changes the sound. The essence of the instrument is a vibrating tongue anchored at one end. The other parts of the instrument are tools to resonate that tongue, the cello bow, modulate the tongue's length, the curved block of wood, which is known as the dax, that you hold in one hand, and a stable surface sound body to amplify the tongue's vibration, which is a soundboard with piezo microphones, but also could be the edge of your dining room table. Like you, you take these shapes, you know, I have some on my wall. Can you see them here? You can see them in the mirror. Yeah, I do. Yeah. And, um, yeah, the daxophone here. And the thing is, like, the daxophone as a, um, as a shape, the, it's like the perfect shape of the daxophone is actually a, a ruler, you know? And, and the, it's just a, it's just a black square. Well, yes, square. you have a black yeah. ruler, a black square. Do oh, you yeah. have one? Yeah, do you want to see it? Yeah, let me see it. This is a black square daxophone. This is just a piece of Zirikoti. And it's, um, you know, it's just a black, it's, well, there's actually a scene in it. There's a scene depicted in it, which is like the hills and the sun peeking out over the hilltop. Can you see it? Nice. Yeah, I can see that. Nice. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's, yeah. So there's, you know, there's the wood and the story of the wood, right? That's super important. You know, all of these, but like, here's, here's a simpler one. Okay. So this is, you know, like, this is the fancy, like, we shape the wood. We tell the stories of the wood, you know, the daxophone. We tell the stories of the, of the plants. We convey kind of our iterations, our curves, the things they do, they go swimming in the water, they're like animals, and that's really cool. And then we also affirm the organicism of the... Of but the wood itself. Right. We affirm it, we yeah. let the wood speak, but yeah. then there's we're getting closer to human now, human intervention. Let me just, just... be clear to the viewers, when okay. you mean affirm the natural nature of the wood, do you mean not cutting a, a shape. fancy shape yeah. or yeah. even a sawtooth shape, a yeah. devilish shape? Well, here, I'll go to... Wood, I'll... But uh... just leaving, but intentionally yeah. making is... a monolith. Right. Yeah. Not this. There's your sawtooth. Yeah. Yeah, potentially or, making a monolith like this this human like aspiration right ob object this crystalline object and the cut exposes yeah. the wood to express its own grain 
vis-a-vis right. -vis the parallel and perpendicular man notions. Well, you know, all of that stuff is real. And, like, with the daxophone, when you cut a shape, like, when you cut a curvy shape, you get different musics, for sure. You get different results. But I, I was just thinking about the monolith and thinking about thinking about the thing that comes to us that we make, like these black USB drives or the yeah. monolith in 2001. And I, and yeah. I, I want to make a different... I, I wanna it's make a, a very natural... Yeah. It's I just a natural make a, wood shape. Is what? That one there. Well, I guess there's two things I want to say, which is there's the story in the grain, and then there's the chaos magic of just cutting... Like, I love the bad camera here. You can't even see the grain in this one. This is just... No. A, this is just... No the plainest wood and here in the light it's just a perfect i mean this is like a i mean i used to let me very, ask you ask me a question yeah. yeah in that piece yeah was there a place where the daxophone and the strings mm -hmm. were becoming similar in sound is, yeah. Did you do that with the daxophone blade? What blade, how do you specify that? I think I did that with the notation, but two answers to that. So the first answer is the viola da gamba, which in that piece is played by the Science Ficta Quartet. There, um, so that's like a Baroque instrument with gut strings and loose horsehair bow, which is yeah. under hair held, you know, not over yeah. overhand, but underhand. This is like um, already sounding closer to the daxophone because the up yeah. bow and the down bow sound different, just like a daxophone, you know. So, um, yeah, I mean, I guess what I'm trying to say is also there's that there's in the mute, there's in the instrument. But so the daxophone is already getting closer to the, the sound of the gut, you know, coming from the animal, not coming from yeah. the ore in the ground. But another way to say it is um, not coming from the ore. Not coming from... <laughs> but I also try to do that in the music. Like that piece is called Masking Songs. And that's one of the masking songs. There are like 17 of them. And uh, it's meant to be these contours where one sound goes away and reveals something else that's there. So there's always a play between what's at the periphery of what you can hear and what's in front of what you can hear. Were there like... Yeah. Were there um, tinnitus emotions yeah. going into the piece? Yeah, that's a, that piece is a big tinnitus emotion, for sure. So, um, so like, each yeah. scene is a different kind of tinnitus texture, roughly? Well, I guess I was thinking about, like, how do you survive with tinnitus, which is also, like, how do you survive with misophonia? or, or hyperacusis. And one of the things you do is you're, you're developing two powers. And one power is masking, which is your ability to like cover up sounds with other sounds. So that's like quite literally, you know, I put on the fume extractor so that I don't hear the chewing sounds or something. Right. Yeah. But that's, yeah. that's the physical world, the, the yeah. power of the physical world. But yeah. um, there's also the power of the mental world, which is called suppress yeah. suppression. So can I read you yeah. something? This is from Brian Moore. This is basic audiology, right? It's worth considering the perceptual consequences of a loss of frequency selectivity. The first major consequence is a greater susceptibility to masking by interfering sounds. When we are trying to detect a signal in a noisy background, we use the auditory filters giving the best signal to noise ratio. In a normal ear, where the auditory filters are relatively narrow, all of the background noise except a band, a narrow band around the signal frequency is attenuated at the filter output. In an impaired ear, where the filters are broader, much more of the noise gets through the filter and therefore the detectability of the signal is reduced. 
Thus, the background noises severely disrupt the detection and discrimination of sounds, including speech. A second difficulty arises in the perceptual analysis of complex sounds, such as speech or music. The perception of timbre depends on the ear's frequency selectivity. When frequency selectivity is impaired, the ability to detect differences in the spectral composition of sounds, and hence in timbre, is reduced. Thus, it may be more difficult for the impaired listener to tell the difference between different vowel sounds or to distinguish different musical instruments. Note that the provision of a hearing aid simply amplifies sound will not overcome any of these difficulties. Such an aid may help to make sounds audible, but it does not correct the impaired frequency selectivity. Well, it spoke about telling vowels. And yeah. telling instruments apart. And I thought you explored both of those in the piece because the vowels, the daxophone was making a lot of vowels. Yes. Like differing kinds of vowels that were like uh, yeah. modulating into each other. Let me, can I go back to this non physical world mental control thing? This is really important, okay? So um, this is from Powell Yasterboff. Contrary to the masking of external sounds, it is possible to abolish the perception of tinnitus sounds by pure tones of a similar intensity, regardless of their frequency. This proves that masking of tinnitus does not involve a mechanical interaction of basilar membrane movements and does not depend on the critical band principle and therefore has to occur on a higher level within the auditory pathways. Consequently, the elimination of the perception of tinnitus by another sound should be labeled suppression rather than masking as it is commonly used. And unfortunately, Feldman's fundamental discovery has been widely disregarded and resulting in focusing attention on masking rather than suppression and in producing tinnitus instruments tuned to the dominant perceived pitch of tinnitus. Tinnitus instruments. What do you think about this? I think you are, are, have really good hearing, Peter, so you live at this nexus of, of suppression and masking, you know? Does it make sense? Should I summarize Yeah. That? Well, I'll, su I'll paraphrase. The suppression is corona magic, oh. as I said. I mean, it's all like new. I keep on learning. So I'm learning to say, oh man, just fuck it just stay seated and do nothing breathe hmm. we're still learning that so hmm. that's the great one that one you don't need to buy a synthesizer for but for masking you need all kinds of synthesizers for all masking, kinds of crunch you yeah, need for masking yeah you need all of crunch the maker things. and you like a rustle a paper rustler you know, paper rustling, like a well, packing material generator, think, sound generator. Actually, all of that stuff you described is noisy sounds. So the other thing is like just yeah, reliance, I can program them. Reliance on non-pitch is masking because you can still yeah. use you can use dynamics for masking. Like you can say yeah, I was. You listen to the brook, listen to the engine, listen to the fan, but tinnitus instruments is like that's like a failure in audiology to be like let's make this thing that's tuned to the pitch of your tinnitus it doesn't work yeah like it. it's about yeah the mental energy is like you've got tinnitus but you're also going to just like zone out to the will you make an instrument that's not tuned to it or you make right. a montage right you not, make a daxophone it's, it's not just yeah. one instrument yeah because the one instrument would if it was like a sine wave that would be trying too hard to be like the pitch like, even though i hear from you that there's more than just sine waves to it i understand yeah. that it's a mental tone i understand that but yeah if you make a montage an impossible montage yeah. is of different pitches then that's what you're seeking
I just want to let you know that there's a inhabitant of this brick building that was traumatized by the building. Really? And from when the days when Berlin was more of a ravers raving scene and there were like rave or a club inside you know the storefront here right and they played really loud music and i think it damaged this resident their mental above the, the one who lives above the club uh-huh. was damaged and sh- this resident has awoken now and so even though i'm not making sound that would travel through the floor i'm perceived on another level right as a cause of hateful sounds you're the perceived enemy like the sound maker of demonic origin and this results in a pounding a klopfen on the, on the floor building above me there's this pounding from time to time that's sometimes like do 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 or boom 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 a few different rhythms and they're spaced by 30 seconds or 20 seconds and like I guess the best musical piece I could ever do in my whole life would be to give this inhabitant a drum kit. If I could go up and bring that, bring a drum kit upstairs. Well, why don't you just order it on Amazon? And just have it sent straight upstairs, yeah. And not even go there. Because actually me going there might mess it up, but yeah. I want to respect this inhabitant as one who is damaged by the building okay. and respect this inhabitant as a musician too. We're talking and say yeah. you you can use your rhythms yeah. to make music. You know, there's these are imagined sounds. There's imagined sounds, demonic sounds, like club sounds coming into this inhabitants mind that they're present that they seem like they're coming now even though they're coming from the past so the inhabitant is reacting to sounds memories of sounds that are heard now but the inhabitant does think of themselves as a musician right a singer so, so the microphone. they have to combine yeah, they need the ghost of the past the premise of the future. But also, if someone thinks of themselves as a singer, like, they're also haunted. Because they're haunted by what they want themselves to be, right? They're ha- yeah, they're haunted by the lyrics of songs past. Yeah, you're haunted by the kind of construction of a song. So, yeah. Yeah. What do you want to start with today? I'll play this. Uh, I'll play the same file that I played yesterday. We're gonna do. This is gonna be the noise piece, the loud piece, because we're talking. You and I were talking about bad music, misophonia, tinnitus, hatred of sound. This computer is computing a CNC. Uh, Synth- it's synthesizing a CNC uh, motor motor rhythm. Say a little more about what a CNC is. Well, it has three motors. It's the Y and the Z and the X, X motors. And they all each have a wire going to them. This is the spindle. And 
they all connect down to here, which is the driver for it. And the orchestra is the these oscillators, these square wave oscillators. Oh, cool. Well, they're not square waves. They're actually just pulse, pulse waves. waves. They have a yeah. certain length. There's a certain length. It's tuned to the motor. There's certain accelerations and stuff. It's all tuned yeah. for the motor, but it makes these waves um, to move the CNC machine very precise distances. And so it uses, it counts all the pulses that it's doing. And it's very precisely, generating signals for the CNC machine to move around. But then in the back of the driver, there's a computer here that um, sends the movement data into this driver, which drives the motors. This could be a piece where we have a cutter off, but we're going for noise here. We're talking about music. We're talking about compositions using bad sounds. We're talking about co-inhabitants who bang on the floor because of hatred of sound. We're talking about moving to a, uh, a abandoned place by the train tracks so that you can make your sounds. And it's all in the service of music in the end. I mean, um, if I weren't a musical instrument maker, we wouldn't be talking about the sound of a CNC this way. So it's all interesting that there's, there's more and more of these bad sounds that we live with. So, and here, I'm gonna push play on the file. I'm gonna start it. So how would I do that? Let me start the bit. Okay, and I actually have it on hold, so I'm going to take it out of hold. This little button down here. Okay, here we go. Now it's actually, it's cutting the exponential curve. When I turn the speed down, a lot because I didn't want to break the bit. You can see on this, when it's a water-cooled spindle, the dust just not doesn't get blown anywhere. It stays all right there. Because if it's an air-cooled spindle like what I used to have, it would blow the dust away. But here, all the dust just stays right in that one place.
so much dust. Approach the bit. Uh-oh. Well, well, Daniel. 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 Wow. Is that the end of the piece? Or the, be the piece? The piece, the piece is, is over, is over now. now. That's that's like the, you know, you blew the amplifier at the noise show. Yep. Can you play me something while I have my headphones on and I'm walking? Yeah. Do you want to watch or listen? Just, you, well, you can have it on the watch, but get the sound. I'll, I'll have that on my walk. Okay, cool. Okay. I'm, gonna do I'm looking that. for fishing spots still. There might be no hipsters at this one spot. Can you hear that? Yeah. I like it. It's making a lot of sense by the canal. Yeah, what is the swamp sound called? What is the one called? That swampy sound. Uh, I don't remember. Like that, bullfrog. Is that a bullfrog? That's a solar sound. Yeah, is that a bullfrog? What's no, the solar. name of it? I don't remember. Oh my god. It might be fluffer nuts at a low frequency. Yes, yeah, fluffer um, nuts. Yeah. There's some, a, a single morning dove in this installation, but it's way back in the trees. So it only, and it's tuned really low. So it only makes sound at 5 p.m. And it like starts hooting like an owl in the trees. And you can hear it hooting a little bit. Well, yeah, that's what it's supposed to do. It's at, only at 5 p.m., right? Right. Evening doves. And the morning dove, too. And the morning dove. I really hear those birds. So, were there geese, too? Were there geese? I don't know yeah. if there were active geese. It sounds like a flock of geese back. So, yeah, that... What's that? That one? Yeah. Are you asking about a bird or about a solar sounder? A solar sounder is a synthesizer played by sunlight. It works opposite from just about every other circuit you might encounter. Solar sounders have no batteries and no knobs. Instead, with speaker, output is governed by sunlight, powering an internal synthesizer that is designed to work with ever fluctuating power source. The goal is not to conserve charge, but to make music. You know, people are really annoyed by something like solar sounders. Almost like a animal, <laughs> like a funny, cheesy animal. This is called woodcock. Yeah. 
Right. There's your funny, cheesy animal. You go through the park and you want to walk your dogs at eight in the morning and suddenly the park is taken over by solar sounders. You know, these things could become an annoyance, but I haven't really known how to ask, what about nature? Like, what does nature think to these kind of, these inhabitants? So there's a 4093, three oscillators, right? And they have jumpers on them. That's the situation. So that's what these are for patching. So they're just patched. And now those go to a 4015, which the, I haven't figured out the circuit for this yet. It's just like, I left jumpers on it because I'm still composing. So I put wires and jumpers all over the circuit so you can route, you know, so you don't have to solder connection. And then this is the pulse shaper for... Oh, you have that little... Uh, there's a sine wave there. The yes, of sign. course. Yeah, and then these are the... This is what I did to your little sine wave. So this is a modified circuit from the Dove, right? It, uh, it has a base resistor that's pulled down that parallels this resistor here. So this drops the resonance circuit. So it gets a little sharper, right? Uh, that's why it goes <laughs> So here's the two pitches, and then here's the rhythm. What do you think, Peter? Does it it's sense? a drum machine. It's like a drum, it's a single, well, with the solar panel well, on, it sounds really different, but it sounds more like a bird, you know? Yeah, it always sounds really different the solar panel on it. Yeah. I mean, I thought that's something I'm still trying to figure out how I want it to sound. But I thought that's the secret, is get that one voice to move around instead of put multiple voices, you know? Yeah. Well, it has to do with the architecture question, too. Right. Because the architecture changes the sound world. And in a city, in this pre-modern city, the bird gets bigger and more glorious because it specializes as resonance, this free canyon, you know? And so you're creating a sound world. Well, it's a receptive sound world, but the right. solar sounders are creating an like, intrusive or interrogatory sound. Um, I appreciate all these things. Wait, the sun is coming out. Maybe this thing will make a chaotic sound. Hold on. There we go. Sounds good. That's the sunlight. Yeah, it sounds great. That's sunlight it on one of those. It has two sounds. It has like a woody sound and a, and and a, a woody sound. Two different kinds of woody sounds. Like oh, a resonant you. wood and then a raspy wood. Did you hear that? It's getting locked. It's just locked on one note now. Yeah, that's what happens. And yeah, that's your feedback loop. Yeah. But you know what? That makes it more like a living thing. Yeah. Simpl simplifying things make it more living too. What do you mean? Well, because then it's like more about like subtle variations within that one simple thing that we actually notice really well as animals and like, you know, walking down the street listening to a bird. Can you say that again? Simple things. We appreciate simple variations. Yeah, that's great what it's doing. You should get a lot of them so interested in how the birds are such a part of this you know like they're there and what are they're going to learn these songs the way birds learn car alarms you know well it definitely begs for birds to get smarter and that that's a great thing if we could keep it long enough that I mean we've already done a lot to help the birds get smarter as what as people well car alarms have helped birds but no what you're doing is a lot is definitely trying to 
honor the culture that birds have already set up in song, in right. their song, their droop and pulse songs. I mean, the question that I don't think I can answer is like, are we actually hurting nature with our work? You know, with like the making, like, can, are we adding to nature? Are we part of it? But because people get disturbed, right? People get annoyed by, you know, electronic music. We don't really know how to answer whether a bird is annoyed or not. Well, yeah, you're getting, that's the trout analysis of the question. What See is how that? your art hurts the planet or nature or other people. Right. Yeah. yeah, I think if the bird is imitating us, I mean, we are also imitating the bird too, right? It's something, you know, this is like an old kind of hilarious question in music, right? Composers like Messiaen transcribing bird song or whatever, or we're trying to imitate birds with circuit boards, you know? But I heard during your piece, actually, even though I had it on headphones, our fellow inhabitant. And I mean, oh. this is such an interesting story to me. I'm so interested in it, even is, though she's actually probably inhabitant? go. The inhabitant is probably dealing with a trauma from a previous tenant being a musical, like a mm. disco club. You're talking and about And I heard the banging neighbor. on the, f yeah, Here, of the lab. Yeah, yeah. 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 going boop 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 yeah. boop yeah and yeah yeah and it'll continue all night through the morning too and she didn't hear the and music because you had it on no. headphones but she was no. getting her misophonia was being triggered just by your existence yeah well and you're talking about masking and it could be part of her masking so i'm oh, talking about she's making project yeah she's like a, a banging yeah. to mask yeah. The, the trauma to mask the well this misophonia seared the seared sound mm -hmm. into the you know the, the the sounds the trauma sounds that are dwelling still in the brain yeah and banging on the floors um yeah like a mask for that but also i uh it's such a great project. I'm so excited about it. I'm trying to get the inhabitant to blend this masking sound with the musical life of the inhabitant. You mean? But I heard today. You mean you're gonna sh the thing that you're going to do, which is shipping your neighbor a drum set? Trying to get a drum set. Well, you said Amazon, but Darren actually doesn't let me use Amazon. Yeah, we don't like Amazon so. here. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, but it was Amazon is just like saying Xerox yeah. machine, you know? Yeah, Xerox a drum kit. But actually, it's funny. They had a discussion already, and it was the inhabitant wants to keep the masking separate from the music still. The so I think that's the main challenge. Yeah. That's the main challenge here is resistances to masking and music right. becoming one like masking is kind of actually involves anger Su suppression and music there's Wait. no such thing as music is angry music well that's why <laughs> Wait, wait. That's why they call it suppression and not masking, like to pull right. the anger in. Yes, yeah. it's not. Yeah, it's all not these just words. A physical exactly. Process. It's like suppression. There's no anger yeah. in music. What do you mean? Do you mean idealistically there wouldn't be anger in music? Well, I think it would prove it if you imagine the mental example of the inhabitant mm. banging on the floor with a stick. And the this is thought of as a non-musical thing. Mm. But if the inhabitant had a drum kit, that would instantly change her relationship into to an expression mm. that's accepted because we're all musicians mm. under here, under the inhabitant. We're under. 
like if instead of banging we're all musicians floor, and she we just love started it. rocking out yeah. it wouldn't there wouldn't yeah. be any rage but she's not trying to express she's trying to suppress right like yeah, that's, there's, that's the, yeah, the it's critical not music sadness. Or, yeah. It's not music. Yeah. You were, it's yeah. like, so there's everything no is suppress- music, not that. <laughs> yeah, there's no music of suppression yeah. or whatever you want to call yeah. it. I would call it anger, though, because anger's involved in it. It's about this thing yeah. that if, if I do these things, if yeah. I trigger on these things, and then if I react to these things, I can nourish my anger. I can let it grow. Right. Um, you, you're not answering my question about chaos magic, and I guess that's fine. But I want to know. What do you want to know about it? Take a well, walk in the sewer, man. I mean, maybe we should read your writing about chaos magic because um, that was really interesting to me. I remember visiting you. Ooh, that sounds good. I remember visiting on the eve of the 2016 president presidential election and you said something like i can store up my chaos magic (laughs) yeah i mean i do proud of my chaos magic (laughs) store my lager ernest hemingway wrote a modern fly fishing story early in the career It was obviously a crucial metaphor to him and potent with analogy to war and industry. Fly fishing is, in fact, ancient, as I will detail later in the chapter of Alien. Hemingway lived at a time when modern plastics and composite materials revolutionized fly fishing, yet it tied to the ancient technique of fooling a trout and eating it. There is still violence, perhaps more because of the efficient way that plastic line casts. Fishing in the great two-hearted river is a metaphor for the war technologies of World War I. That war was the most efficient to be known thus far, an exponential growth from previous ones due to technology. Fly fishing, too, became more exponentially more efficient. Yet, the protagonist eats only an onion sandwich for most of the book. He is post-haunted in the ruins of war. For this reason, we call him the Onion Sandwich Man. Let us perform a psychoanalysis of the Onion Sandwich Man. He is a deep individual, not just simply surviving in the wild. He may be in a wild place, but he is wilder inside. and This makes him a complicated individual. He's not fly fishing in the wilderness, but a burning town. It's not survival, it's chaos magic. There's a non-rhythm with his actions and how he catches fish. The first one he released so gently. The second one was big and he lost it. The third he kept. Finally, he gutted them. Only later in the book is tension released when he slaughters the fish. He eats a simple onion sandwich. This act of improvisation marks him as magical, an alchemist of sulfury into savory. He eats a simple onion sandwich. He eats a simple onion sandwich. This act of improvisation marks him as magical, an alchemist of sulfury into savory. The onion sandwich itself is a red flag of chaos. The sulfur smell added to his breath makes him rub up against others disjointedly. The sulfur smell is a symbol of noise and tumultuous change. The only scent allowed on one's flies should be garlic rubbed on your hand and your sandwich. 
the town is burning and he's eating an onion sandwich. That is a flag of chaos magic. That is the art of contingency, leveraging weather. A sudden freshet, a riffling breeze. Our circumstance, burning town, only an onion to be found. It is said that the gods do not mark fishing as time wasted, even when skunked, because the fisher is engaged in the chaos computer programmed by God, learning patience and awareness to sudden opportunities. Oh, it got really dark where yeah. you are. Got yeah. Really dark. Yeah, it did. That's cool. Yeah, it did. It did get dark. Okay, are you ready? Shall I start this? Got your head? Yeah. Okay. Yeah.
And remember that it ended with the angry dog. Oh, is that your dog? No, it was a neighbor's dog. You know, it was an upset neighbor dog. And it's in the Sorry? It's in the recording. It's in the recording, yeah. It should have been faded out. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of like clay recording. Like, I don't know if the album wants that to be cut at a certain point. You know, like, do we really need to hear all that? I'm not sure. Maybe for the podcast. I think we need to hear the dog. You want to hear the upset sound at the end. Yeah. Yeah, the anger, you have to have this more and more as you develop the tinnitus things. Well, yeah. you don't have to, but it's showing something angry at sound. Yeah. It's pretty important. You know, hmm. yeah. Or like, if it's not you, it's someone else, right? Like, if you're not suffering, well, I didn't think that the, I didn't think that the dog was angry at the sound because I thought the dog was barking at someone outside. But I think it's totally believable that the dog's angry at the sound. It's so also possible maybe that the dog and the sounds are not talking and the sounds are the drama of like the dog experience, right? Yeah, inside the dog brain. I think that's definitely a compositional technique to imagine the paranoid states inside a sound sensitive being's brain. And that's why we come back to the inhabitant too, is that, you know, all, all those pieces in the brain, all those pieces, Imagining you playing the Casio with my singing, mm. you know, and how angry that makes me that it that that it's in tune with my singing. And the dog, the but dog, I mean your tinnitus piece, you talked about it being in tune, but you can't tune with something that's at something inside your head. Well, yeah, you've heard me say and, that before. Yeah. Yeah. And so what does in tune mean? But maybe the dog knows what whenever you are in tune with its, you know, primal nature. Yeah. Then it screams. So hearing that, I, I think maybe you could make it more obvious that the dog is triggered by the sound. I, on it, honestly, I forgot about the dog. So the dog was kind of news to me that, you know, what I was thinking about it was the front of the music, like all of those, all of those kind of high frequency, shrill, evolving blossoms. But like I noticed from this session, you know, and that's, well, that's recorded just with dogs the, too. Yeah, I mean, I noticed when I listened back to some of that music, which isn't studio recording, which is like recorded in the weird room, the field recorder, you hear all the sirens you hear like the loud sounds of the neighbor, you hear that like you're in a room with others, you know. The sounds that you were focused on, the dog was focused on too. I think the dog was like a guide through this world. And I, I was curious if you have interviewed people who were angry about the solar sounders, that um, maybe if you could record something about this anger more and more it could be an interesting thing mm. to to deal with people's anger towards sound and animals angers towards sound and why don't birds get angry about sound or do they they we probably might, just fly away we yeah the birds have the ultimate 3d space so you know if you, you yeah. can't be tortured if you're a bird yeah, you, you can go just above go it. anywhere. You go above it. Yeah. Way off. But I think, you know, I'm kind of looking for a different way of thinking about tinnitus in this music. Like, I'm looking for a different way of thinking about misophonia and uh, hyperacusis of like the, what is like, even if you're angry and full of rage and if you're like suffering all the time, like you still may be making choices that are like shaping your active life that are like kind of under under misunderstood as pieces but actually have well, yeah. a piecification to them what i'm trying to say well, is that like, might be yeah go ahead that might be why monk is 
play those original pieces is because he had the rule that you can't play in tune with my singing. Mm -hmm. And I was or like, I don't believe that I should play in tune with other people's singing because I have that rule myself. Mm -hmm. And so he made those pieces that were dissonant because of that. Yeah, although like you listen to Monk's music and it like doesn't sound like sad dissonances. It doesn't sound like yeah. ba basic emotions. They're like yeah. really ecstatic and colorful chromaticism. Yeah. Like, what well, sounds like singing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, did I tell you about the Tinnitus Sufferers group on Facebook? There's like this suffer, there's, there's many groups that I'm a part of on Facebook. And did I tell you about that? No, there's this um, tinnitus success stories and tinnitus suffers group, but the success stories group is so funny because they're always suffering. And like every week, someone says, "I thought this was supposed to be a group about success." No, no. And, but there's no success yeah. stories, and uh, and uh, occasionally I'll post there, and I'll someone will say like, "I'm worried about going to the MRI." <laughs> what am I going to do and I'll say I love the MRI I mean I'm speaking honestly like I really love the MRI it sounds like beautiful electronic music I think of the MRI as like a really special time where I get to hear electronic music that doesn't have a loudspeaker you know so there's no yeah you know it's just a spe it's yeah. like a privilege it's like wow I'm going to go hear a concert of electronic music with no loudspeakers that's the MRI yeah. and um, yeah well it's the CNC machine Right, you know, it's yeah. the scene, yeah. So, but then yeah. um, they say to me, you know, you're crazy. Like, I can't trust what you're saying. It, you say to me, the MRI is not a problem. It's not gonna hurt my tinnitus. Then if you follow that up by saying, for me, the MRI is beautiful music, they'll be like, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? Like, I have no, I can't trust you anymore. And that's like also a frustrating thing to me that I've realized, like, I try to be there at these groups to be a person who's kind of like, found a productive way of dealing with difficulty hearing things like difficulty with you know misophonia difficulty with hyperacusis difficulty with tinnitus and then I play yeah. my music for them and they're like oh my god I can't trust you so that's like yeah. that's like a very <laughs> frustrating thing where it's like you, well, realize, you got to their head you you realize how out out of control you might be you know like um yeah. that you know, that people can't trust that, you know what I mean? Um, so that's kind of like a weird, that's like a, a kind of sinking sensation, I suppose, which is like, you want to make sure you're an ally to people who have hearing damage, but like, ultimately, you might be pretty far out if this is what you're doing with that stimulus. I think the same is true with you, with misophonia. Like if, if someone like misophonia saw the way you live, they might be like, well, that's just not a workable solution for me, you know? Right. With tinnitus, you're doing out in the public and you're doing it where you're trying to have a job, where you're like at work, you know, and you have a problem that you can't focus. So it could bum you out. It could cause a loss of your livelihood and loss yeah. of your, you know, profession. Yeah, yeah, totally. Well, we could have a thing where um, where we both go for a walk to get the headphones. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just put this away. No, but I'll let I'll leave this recording and I'll join on my phone and we'll both go for a walk to get the headphones. Yeah. And I'm getting um, beat. Here's beat. I have beat. beat. For the worms. It's in a mouser bag. <laughs> That's good. The bait is in the bag. Can you still hear me? Boom. Yeah. There you are. Okay, cool. So we're going on a walk to get the headphones. I'll just show you the canal. It's really hip right now. Nice. Um, you can see a lot of people on the bridge and then down. Oh, do you know the name of the, the canal? Uh, Hobrechtbroke. Hobrechtbroke. Yeah, this there's is not people sitting everywhere on the side of the canal. Yeah. 
That's so, cool. And none of them are fishing, but I could wait a little bit. I could go straight for the headphones right now is the wisest thing to do. I have to flip it sometimes so you know the like amount of intervention I'm doing with the cameraman technique. I know. So well, I appreciate the city country divide that we're manifesting now. I mean, you're in an urban metropolis where people well, don't have COVID, and I'm in the country land where people have COVID and they don't care about it. Oh, this is a cool place to show you. Can you see this? The power plant. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Look at this. Graffiti tunnel. Yeah. Look. Good. You see my graffiti? Hold the line. No, above that. Oh, yeah, I do see your graffiti. So up these stairs would be the person who has an earworm. Boom, 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 boom. We should talk about her again. Well, there's a her, new development. Don't be scared. There's a new thing that happened that one new notice that's happened is that when she's singing, which is actually her music, no one should be playing keyboards in tune with her in the office below her. What do you mean? She doesn't want anyone playing in tune with her. What does below she want? Her. She wants to be an independent sound maker. Yes, uh, to like to have a copyright on the sound space. Or well, yeah. How would you say it? Exclusivity. Yeah. That's kind of crazy to me. It's like you'd think that. <laughs> and by the way, you know, there's no keyboards. It's not like there's a Casio keyboard. She has a mental idea there's of people no being in tune with her. Under the... I remember I there was something that happened once with your son, Kiri, is that Kiri was playing some music and I thought it was so cool because I, I love how musical he is as a kid. You know, I love that crazy, manic, experimental kid energy. And I was trying to play along with him. And he was like, no, stop. I'm playing. Yes. He wouldn't Exclusivity. Let me, exactly. So he wouldn't let me harmonize with him. Now, I don't know if that's like a young kid thing. I don't know, because Kiri was young, maybe five at the time. Maybe he would have a different feeling today. But maybe it's just about, you know, agency and boundaries. Maybe your neighbor, she's just like, well, it what, just what it would actually, cause her to go into the area where she wants to harmonize with people? I mean, it's so beautiful to just to imagine. It's like basically... There's so many good outcomes from this craziness because it's like, then I immediately imagine, okay, oh, I believed when I was told that I thought that someone actually was in the big, like playing a Kathy keyboard in a cheesy, dun, 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 and like while she's singing to mock her, I believed yeah. that someone was actually mocking her. But then I, I also believed when I was told that no one was actually mocking her. It was right. just imaginary because, you know, when you're singing, there's some music in your head and yeah. you're hearing it. No one was actually making physical keyboard Casio music, but she was hearing that. Um, right. And then, but I imagine well, man, let's play out of tune and have the weirdest like Sun Ra, Casio, just weird imitation, mockery, non-music 
it just made me think of all these weird like bands and weird yeah. things to do with sound like Sun Rob played it, Cassie, go, it just it's yeah yeah well yeah out of tune kind of and monk too Sun yeah. Ra and monk combined not playing in tune just playing up do 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 you know like off tune right. non-chords with the yeah. singing it's just gonna get better and better but the thing is this is all invisible unrecorded music it's unheard music it's all in someone's head it's because no one is playing anecdotes. along with her she yeah, there's no one anecdotes playing. coming from this brain and they're it's musical like, anecdotes they're like compositions <laughs> it's like stop playing casio like your yeah. instructions, stop playing Casio no, her tune piece, with me when I'm singing. Her piece has changed from the neighbors are making weird sounds and it disturbs me. Right. And now it's, well, I'm playing, so while I play. And it's like- Someone <laughs> asked her if yeah. she's a musician because we wanted to give her a drum kit. But, right. and there's something, I think the earworm began with the word musician. And asking that, and then there's this official, he became another official avenue for the, right. for the fantasy myths to ooh, look at that cat, the fantasy infect. Yes. So well, the, we had the a cat fantasy from outside. Has infected okay. The music itself. Yeah. Well, I guess the next fantasy would and now be it's about non. Both of her fantasies are about audio separation from her neighbors. So you would kind of hope to create a fantasy that would be about audio unity, right? Like I gave her a drum set so she could drown us out with noise or something like that. And now it's like, have you ever heard her singing? To me, it's kind of cool, like as the meditation of life. Yeah. One thing you can do at the end of your life is just have all these audio hallucinations. You don't need to do anything. You just like hallucinate everything. You make up this whole weird conspiracy wow. about th this band, these monkey band playing under your deathbed. Yeah. You don't even need to, I mean, because like what music are you going to listen to on your deathbed? You know, is that really appropriate to be like, oh, yeah, I need to listen to jazz right now? No. <laughs> you know, listen to nothing. You listen don't to hear sound music your on your deathbed. You hear like the accumulations of all the different musics you've listened to. So it becomes like a yeah. spastic tape collage. It becomes like an, a dense yeah. kind of forest. But part of that is you're also like hearing the past in the present you're hearing like many layers of sound at once. That's a hard experience to convey because so much of the music we listen to, so much of the music we make is so grounded in the present tense, you know? Like the unpatched synthesizer, it's about the moment, you know? How you're patching it, what you're telling it to do. But all this type of stuff that we're talking about is like, like the imagined music. Oh, I think you froze. Can you still hear me? Damn, I lost you, Peter. Bye. 
します。